but a quick claim deed, but it needs to be a warranty deed. That's referenced twice in the resolution. I've updated that and provided you with uh, a, a revised edition. I'd ask you to consider that revised copy of the resolution tonight. <clears throat> Stand for any questions on that. Thank you. Good. Any questions on that? Do we have a motion? I move we approve the consent agenda. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. With the revision. We have um, a second. Can we please, um, excuse me, can we please amend the motion to um, the consent agenda with the revision? Revise. Okay. Revise. I, I move with the revision. Thank you. Thank you. And I second. <laughs> Very good. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hearing none, the motion passes. First item on our agenda this evening is to consider a request to close athletic park. They're asking to close the park circle from 6 p.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. And they will be using like the Banshell area. And my understanding is they're going to also do some food trucks out there for um, their entertainment and food that evening. Yes, and they'll have a tent. They've got a, they've got a whole plan. they got a whole it'll plan. Be, it'll be cool. We, we all just need to pray for good weather. Yes. <laughs> Very good. I'll make a motion that we approve the park closing request. I we have, second that. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hearing none, motion passes. Item number four on our agenda is to amendments to chapter 12 of the code. Suzanne and Chris? Yes. Uh, 22, actually. Commissioners, in your packet, you have. You have a memo and you have ordinances and the purpose of this, uh, there are two, two bold. One is we need to update our code language because we want to make sure that we do not have any tampering with meters and we want there to be consequences for uh, tampering with meters. And if there are questions about meters and somebody wants to have their meter changed out, and they would like to have any third-party testing. Uh, we would like uh, code documents to state that those costs would be bore by the property that is requesting to have those changes made. And if uh, the testing shows that there was nothing wrong with the original meter, then they would bear the cost of that. Um, the, the big issue here is we want to make sure we don't have any tampering with meters because we are uh, coming upon that more and more and we need uh, we need that to be dealt with. Um, the other issue is it's been since 2010 since we instituted increases in water meter and tap fees and this is uh, specifically uh, the specific areas of importance is when we're dealing with large lines, uh, large water lines typically are larger and this has to do with um, new development and we have shown in the cover memo what the proposed fees would be for meter tap fees fire lines uh, we also are looking at sewer tap fees and we've also shown you a chart that was put together last August that shows neighboring communities and their costs and they kind of run the gamut. What we're showing you is all of the costs that would be associated with this. Some show just a cost of meter material and labor. Um, they're, they're all over the board, but we've tried to hit kind of right in the middle. If you look specifically to Wichita, where we are compared frequently, um, just for instance, if you're looking at a water, water meter tap, on say a, a three inch, we're proposing that uh, eight thousand nine hundred and forty-five dollars, and this is because we are seeing increases, significant increases, in meters and all water line appurtenances. The cost for that is increasing rapidly. Um, and if you look at Wichita's connection fee. They have a connection fee and water equity, so it's over twelve thousand uh, dollars for the same size line. Mm -hmm. Just look at all of them here but that was we included the chart so that you could see how we compare to others um, and there's two separate ordinances mm -hmm. here Chris, you, my 
amends the actual code, and that's what Suzanne just went over. The second talks about those uh, TAP fees, which can be set by city administration, but approved by the governing body. So this is that mechanism for that approval. You, I don't know if you also want to talk about the pipes. I know you talked about what's appropriate in terms of the materials, removing the lead. Um, yes, positively. Uh, when we do encounter lead lines that are me on the service side, um, we are requiring those have to be taken out. Uh, we have been taking care of it. any lead appurtenances. When we see those at any point in time, if there's any connection or anything that is lead on the line, when we dig something up to do a repair, we are required by law to replace it. And if it falls on the service line side, we do have to notify the property owner and they need to do that to do the repair because of it being lead. One thing I notice on the water tap fee uh -huh. data, when you really dig into it, the one that looks to be the lowest is Hutchison, but I bet you that that's probably just a tap fee because those numbers are right in line with Garden City's tap fees. And when you combine the, the total cost, then it really levels the playing field with, with the costs that you're suggesting for this city. Right, for like the installation costs, yes, mm -hmm. sir. Mm -hmm. so, at first, at first blush, it's like, whoa, that's... Absolutely. <laughs> but you got to remember, you know, there's very few that are putting in a four-inch uh, water meter, and there's very few that are putting in a 10-inch uh, fire line. That's an unusual scenario, but we want to cover our costs on that because they are big, big costs to our operating budget. Right. If the commission finds those two ordinances acceptable, uh, it would be appropriate for two motions to approve, uh, separate motions to each ordinance. And what's the resolution? Number? Sure. For the first one, it would be 5036-21. I move to approve 5036-21. Second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, ordinance passes. The second ordinance number would be 507-21. I'd make the motion to approve 5037-21. All second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Item number five on this evening's agenda is to consider an ordinance amending chapter three of the code pertaining to animals and fowl. Uh, Lindsay Ruminant. I can start this and okay. Lindsay can jump in with any questions. There's a, a short memo um, in your packet. It outlines the changes to the city's animal control ordinance. I'll go over just a few of those changes for the benefit of the audience. Um, the ordinance recognizes and allows hobby breeders so long as they have appropriate, appropriate licenses. Um, a change has been made to allow invisible fencing as an exception to our animal at large. Uh, provision so long as you have the invisible fence, so long that it's marked uh, so the public can see that, that it's in, in place, um, it would not be an animal at large as it is in the current code. There have been some changes to make consistent with the ADA in terms of service animals. You'll see some adjustments to that language. Um, we've removed the requirement that cats be registered, and we've reduced the registration fee so long if the dog is not spayed, neutered, or microchipped. Uh, initially, that fee was 40, and staff is suggesting consider lowering that to 20. There's still the discounts should someone spay or neuter their animal or uh, microchip them. And if you have any specific questions on that, Lindsay can talk about that. Um, we did make some changes in regard to dangerous animals. Once an animal is deemed dangerous, certain controls that the animal control officer would have in terms of tracking those and some of those requirements. And then we've also added a, a redemption fee slash impound fee for animals that are picked up. Um, there are the a person's already on the hook for certain reclaim fees in terms of housing the animal, but we've added a fee structure which escalates on each reclaim. Um, there's also been some changes to the trapping provision, whereas it was allowed um, with the cage type traps, now everything is requiring a permit. So those are the main changes. Um, 
I would stand for any questions about the form of the ordinance. And again, our ACL Lindsay is here. If you have any questions in terms of the, the specifics, she's happy to answer those questions. This is the first look on this ordinance. If the commission has any questions, concerns, staff has no problem uh, reworking it and bringing it back. Uh, again, I know this is the first read. If you're comfortable with it, staff is in its current form as well. I would just ask for just a little brief explanation on the hobby breeding. <clears throat> so the main reason the hobby breeding came up was I actually had a citizen that just moved to Newton call asking questions because they were looking into breeding. I don't remember the exact breed, but they just wanted to ensure that they were in compliance. And lots of other cities, like Wichita is a big one, that have restrictions on hobby breeding. Just basically explains that they um, have to have that state permits for hobby breeding and have to be in compliance with the states for it. Mm -hmm. And then it also kind of goes along with uh, the number of animals that you're allowed within the city. It's almost to an extent an exception to that because they are having more animals. But it would still limit them. Um, the hobby breeding limits them to what was it, like three, four, and five litters a year. I, I think that's exactly what it is. I was trying yeah. to. Find I didn't it. understand that. It's three, four, or five litters of dogs or cats or both. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that three, four, or five is same kind of. <laughs> that's what, that's the stage lingo on it. Um, I mean, honestly, two female dogs or one female dog typically goes in the heat twice a year. So mm -hmm. she could produce two litters a year. So in this instance, for this individual, she could have two females and still be under that three, four, or five limit. Oh, okay. So just kind of, I guess, depends on if someone's wanting different breeds or if they're doing dogs and cats or right. what what exactly they're wanting. Oh, okay. But Thank you. just kind of puts a little bit more restriction on it. So I like the addition of the invisible fence uh, language. I am. I have questions about the trapping. Sure. Yeah. So on the trapping, right now, if you have a possum or something, mm -hmm. there's nobody to call. You have to deal with that yourself. And usually, the way that it's dealt with is you call a buddy that has a trap, mm -hmm. you put a trap out, and you take it out to their farm. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but under this new ordinance, we wouldn't be able to do that. Is that correct? So I created a mock form, um, and I showed it to Chris that. Essentially, it would just be that if you wanted to trap, say, a possum, you just call me, fill out the form, and you just want to trap. It just helps me keep a better eye on who's trapping, what they're, trapping, what they're doing with the animals. This kind of came about because I had an individual trapping pet cats, and then people's cats were becoming lost. Don't really know what happened to them. So it just kind of helps me better keep an eye on, right. I guess, what's going on. It's not saying that you just can't trap. It's, and it's, there's no cost to it. It's literally just a piece of paper that states your information, where you're trapping, uh, what you're trying to trap, um, and how long you're trapping, essentially. Is that something that we can web enable and make it easier to put that request in, maybe? You're insane, yes. I think that'd be <laughs> important. Thank you. Did that answer your questions, Ron? It did. Thank you. Being a trapper. Yeah. <laughs> and those with I have perfect. lots of skunk. I've caught, caught my house, cat many times. Yeah. So. <laughs> so have I. I caught a bluebird one time. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. And those that have, like, the uh, new, uh, wildlife nuisance damage control permit would be exempt. Same with caring hands, if they're doing their TNR, their trap and and release program, they would mm -hmm. be exempt from that. Mm -hmm. Right. It's more just for individuals trying to trap on their own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very good. I don't think I had anything else. Chris gave me a red line so I could actually see all the changes. What all said a dangerous animal? Like the agreement. Or just oh, it, it, we're changing the dangerous animal. Uh, yeah. it, 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 we're 
No, it's more just for the agreements. So once okay. the, the dog deemed dangerous, I guess deemed dangerous, then they the judge could offer them agreement that if they follow the dog lifetime, there's certain things within that they have to like uh, public liability insurance, uh, fees, special collar signs, mm -hmm. okay. just certain things they have to follow. And again, I'm a big form person. <laughs> I created a form that would go with their registration fee. So I would go and contact the insurance company to verify they do have an active policy. Okay. Um, I'd go to the house probably every six months, honestly, and verify they have the signs, the collar is still intact, the proper fencing. <coughs> Any other questions? Very good. So we were asked to entertain a motion to approve the would, ordinance. Would we have the ordinance, ordinance number on that? That number would be 5038-21. I move that we approve 5038-21. I second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Item number six on this evening's agenda is to receive a request from Stan Broadhagen for waiving out of district sewer fees on Meridian North of Broadway. Suzanne? Uh, yes. Commissioners, any property that wants to tie onto a water or sewer main uh, but has not previously been included in a water or sewer benefit district could be subject to an out of district fee. Uh, we have a developer, Stan Broadhagen, is wanting to build on 703 North Meridian. And uh, it's shown in the orange kind of rectangle on the screen there. Uh, he is wanting to build a small house or a tiny house there. Um, the property has not been included in a benefit district. The property was in the county uh, and was an agricultural use when the sanitary sewer was extended past the property in 2007 uh, to serve the house at 901. Yeah, there you go. The sewer was ex extended along Meridian. And so the property was not included in the benefit district. And so 901 paid for the extension of that sewer. Uh, the fee for the out of district fee for the sewer uh, would be $4,834.08. That is uh, based on a square footage price. And it's, we calculate the cost of the main and then we uh, do that on a square footage basis for the properties that are receiving benefit. So then the fee is calculated. Uh, to determine if you were going to tie on to that sewer, you would pay the fee based on the square footage of the property that would then in turn receive the benefit that didn't pay to, into the sewer uh, project because that property is still paying special assessments on the sanitary sewer. This fee is in place for 15 years uh, following the original construction of the sewer and that's according to the ordinance that I attached here to your cover memo. And that was based on a commission policy that was uh, discussed several years back. The, the out of district fee needs to be paid at the time a building permit is pulled for the development uh, to occur on the property. Because the out of district fee would not be required after September 1st of 2022, that's when this fee would be dissolved, so to speak, um, based on the existing policy be, due to the 15 year passage of time. Uh, Mr. Broadhagen has asked that the commission waive the fee. Uh, he wants to build now, but does not want to, uh, does not believe his small home project can sustain the expense of this fee. Um, I think you have to also consider that the somebody uh, was required to pay for this sewer at some point in time, and that happens to be in 2007, and they paid for the extension so that the main line would uh, be available to this undeveloped property at a significantly lesser fee than if they had paid to come in at that point in time because the cost to extend a sewer today costs more than it does than it did in 2007 for sure. Um, and that property owner at 901 bore the entire cost of this specific sewer. Uh, I believe that Mr. Broadhagen is here and uh, may want to speak to this issue. Sir. First of all, uh, I do not own that lot yet, but I have a contract to purchase it 
from the person who paid for the for who has the specials going against them. Understand? That's nine what nine oh one? Yes. Nine oh one presently still owns this lot. And he paid for the extension. He paid for it. Now he's selling me the lot and essentially he has no objection to me asking for a wait for a, for a waiver. The money would actually go to him, is what Suzanne tells me. It goes into the benefit district. It goes in t to pay the bond. debt service amount right. for the he, bonds of which on he's, the project. Of which he's paying, correct? Uh-huh. Yeah. Is so. he paying it? He's not paying it solely. In this instance, that is the only property, yes. Okay. Typically, that's not the case, but because this was kind of on the outskirts of the city and it was the only property that was wanting sewer, the extension was paid for solely by 901. So I'm buying it from him. He paid for it. I'm buying it from him. We're going to close next week, we hope. Um, and this is the last lot. That everything else in between him and there is in the county. Okay? So this is the last parcel of land that can actually be developed. This is, this is a tract within the city, and I own the tract next to it, which I'm building a house on now. So, uh, to the, essentially, to the south. Right. You're building so essentially, I could wait 15 months, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't have to pay anything. But then, I think Newton needs housing now, last I checked. Uh, a real estate agent told me two weeks ago there were 15 houses on the market. They told me that there were seven. And this week they tell me there's 10. So I can certainly wait, and nobody will get anything. I just want to move forward, get a house started, if, if the commission will agree, agree to that. Questions for me, other? So, so how we came up with the 4,800. Is, is that how much is the payment on that? Is it is that like a hundred percent allocated to that lot for the whole period of time, or is that just that? Or the total debt service payment is in this special assessment cost that is being paid on the bonds, and the calculation is by. Square footage. By ordinance, and it is yeah. by square footage. We, right. we determine um, the the cost per square foot of the original benefit district Is that for 15 that sewer. years of cost or just two years of cost left, the 4000 No, 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 no. That's the cost in time. I mean, it's not, it doesn't decrease over time at all. Okay. The cost per square foot at the time that the sewer was built for the benefit district. Is that amount? Is that whatever I think I put it in here didn't I yeah uh, 37 point three cents per, per square foot so not like a, a special would be calculated on a sidewalk that had three years remaining on that special that's correct it would not be okay. that way it was set up differently if we were going to do it that way we'd have to Right, change the policy. I think that answers Rod's yeah. is, is, is 48 representative of the total cost or at this point in time remaining cost. The I didn't pull that. I, yeah. I, I didn't pull that here. I don't know. Do it, I would think. But. Well, if next year is year 15, next September will be year 15 of the yeah. 20 year special. It's a 20 so year special. It's a 20 year spread. And at oh, year okay. 15, the district fee goes away. That's what the ordinance oh, okay. was set by your predecessor. I'm with yeah. you now. I thought it was a 15 year. No, so it's a 20 year special okay. at year 15 is what the ordinance currently says. At the time, the city commission thought, okay, well, you're getting out there in time and development that occurs around the area and the sewer is going to depreciate over time. And so they set the 15 year just. To keep it simple. Yeah. But the 4,800 is not representative of putting in the sewer main. It's representative of the actual tap, that, that connection, the service off of that main. It's not the linear feet on the frontage. No, the total cost of the sewer, and I didn't bring that with me, but the total cost of the sewer, say it was uh, $50,000 to build the sewer, and then the square footage of the benefit district, um, whatever that square footage was, the dollar amount for the sewer cost was divided by the square footage of the benefit district to determine a dollar amount per square foot. 
and then that gets applied to anybody that wants to tie along as they go because then they're paying a fee equal to what the individuals in the benefit district paid originally. Right. This is a unique one where there's only one yeah, property right. owner. Typically, you have multiple property owners along the way. Um, in this instance, I have not heard from the property owner 901. I did not know that you were purchasing from that person individually, and I don't know what that individual thinks about this. Well, I told him I was coming here. Okay. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, why why did that sewer have to be put in there for that? Did they request it? Uh, yes, the property owner at the time that lived at 901 requested sewer. Okay. Now they had a failing lagoon. Okay. Remember, right? They were on the city. They were just, so really just the house, this parcel, was in the city. These were out. Right. And the, it was an elderly lady at the time, and she asked to come into the city. The policy is for us to serve you with our water and sewer systems. We need okay. to be with our city line. Right. So the, the property between the one that stands developing on and 901 is still county now today or is it I'm city? not certain that that's accurate because um, when this lady passed away many years ago it went into an estate and up? then um, a doctor and his wife here in town bought it in 2016 and they wanted to build a larger house on this parcel and they annexed it and they were about to go through the zoning process and he ran into a litany of health issues. And then okay. he sold the property to another gentleman who now lives there and that was about two years ago. Okay. It's correct, yes. And I only remember it so very clearly because it was the very first project I worked on when I started working here. So <laughs> it was, I remember that very clearly. So I'm, and I, would, I can definitely verify whether that's in I believe at the time they purchased, because there's a tiny little lot here too, I don't know if you see on the north side. Yeah. And it was all under, at that point in time, it was all under the same ownership of this um, woman's estate. Well, I can assure you I'm paying him a lot more than 4500 yeah. for that lot. Yeah, and I guess here's my thought on it too. I felt differently maybe before I knew you were purchasing it from him who paid for the current owner and whoever lived in that home before. Um, I don't want us to set the precedent. I think you'll understand that we're going to weigh these fees for people in the future just because. But we're dealing with one home that originally had the cost and you're purchasing it from them. Um, if you don't purchase it from them, they're going to continue to pay that cost in the future for that same line. And I'm just going to wait. Where if you buy it now, they got that 4000 and some dollars. So, um. And I was unaware that they were the only... I would have, I would have, I would have had them along with me. Yeah. Had I known he w it was only a one person benefit district, didn't yeah. know that till tonight. We learned something. Yeah. And is this is this one house going on that property, one, one tiny that's, home? That's all I can build. The rest of the stuff I believe is in the in the county, but we're okay. yeah, I'll double check it for you, sir. I can't remember because they went through part of the process and, and then they ran into some health issues and they didn't finish it. And then a couple years later, they sold it to the gentleman who lives there. Now. So hypothetically speaking, if somebody came today and they said, we want to build a house right next to the one, we love the one that stands building. We want to build one right next to it, but it's county. Yeah. They would have we to want to use your sewer. We would have to annex them. We'd have to annex them. Okay. And then they would have to pay the cost to use it. Yeah. Okay. Well, and if it's a year or two, no. No, I'm, I'm saying like today. Be, hypothetically yeah. speaking, if it was today, they would yeah. be paying that same amount, 37.373 yeah. square foot. Okay. And this is the only existing curb cut. There's no more. No more what? No I'm more sorry. curb cuts. Okay. This is the only one. For drive access yeah. to. Yeah. So if I don't have any more questions, but I, I appreciate you taking consideration. I will tell you, Newton is in a housing crisis. Yeah. Uh, my, my grandfather started building houses in 1930. My father quit in the eighth grade and joined him, built a lot of houses. I started selling real estate in 1973, and that's the closest it comes to this, this housing crisis. So you have to go back almost 50 years to have this low of inventory. Thank you. Thank you. So the only injured party would be the person living there. Person living where, sir? At 901, yeah, at the 901. current house? It, it, it would only affect him. Mm -hmm. Is there some yes. reason why we can't have that individual here at a future meeting? I, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you're not telling the truth, but I would like to hear it from him myself personally. We could do that or get a statement from or that individual. Yeah, that was the case today, uh, yeah. prior to today. I, yeah. I would, I would certainly yeah. encourage that right yeah. there to get a statement from that individual. Yeah. That way we can hear the whole story. Yeah. I, and again, I, I believe in too, but yeah. 
I think it'd be fair to everybody to. We wouldn't be establishing a precedent. That's right. If we did it that way, it I would be so. honoring an agreement yes. between him and. So would you like to table this matter and bring it back would, at a future yeah, meeting? Is that what we're hearing? Yes, that please. Makes Do you need a motion to table? That would be appropriate, Mayor. I move that we table this matter to a future meeting. I second it. We have a motion and second. All those in favor of tabling? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion tabled. Item number seven on this evening's agenda is to consider the lease agreement for airport building five. Can we Chris going to tag team this? Yes, we will. Um, I will start out and give you guys just a brief overview, and then um, Chris will be able to speak to any questions you have about the proposed contract and lease agreement. Um, so I'm going to speak to you tonight about a company called Human Plant Solutions. And Kyle and Sam, those principals, are here. So we would invite them to speak to you guys, and they can help answer questions. But as we typically do, I'd like to give you all an overview of the proposal and where we are at. Um, about six or eight months ago, we, uh, Beth at the EDC, began working with Human Plant Solutions. They have a very unique um, product. They build... Uh, artificial limbs, and I'm going to paraphrase this so you guys please hop in when I say something wrong because I don't want to mistake anything. So um, they build really neat artificial limbs for someone who is either born with a disability or an amputee of some kind. Their product is unique because it is made of a combination of carbon fiber, um, hemp fiber, and resins, which makes it lighter than the traditional uh, amputee might experience or that prosthetic limb might experience in the past. Um, they have been working and making, the, oh, excuse me, I should note, they make these products on demand, so this is not mass production. They are working with a doctor who takes measurements and fits the patient. They then make the specified product, gets back to the doctor, and the doctor works with the patient to, uh, to maintain it going forward. Uh, they have been producing these at the WSU Go Create space, and they are to a point where they are ready to expand and go out on their own. They kind of exhausted the limitations of that space that is available. If you haven't ever been there, such a cool place, such an amazing place. And it was exactly what it's intended to be, which is an incubator space so somebody could start out a business in, in industry. Could also the machinery up front when you're just starting out. So we are fortunate now that they have grown enough uh, and we have a little time finding them a space because uh, the challenge is it needs to be something appropriately sized for them, but also needs to have industrial zoning because they're technically uh, creating a product. And as you know, we have a shortage of buildings. Just like Mr. Broadhead noted, we have a shortage of housing. We also have had a shortage of industrial buildings, and that's an ongoing challenge for us when we're recruiting industries and trying to locate here. Uh, we really wanted to keep them in our community. They have great ties to NIAR, to K-State, and to KU. They have finished or are buttoning up their patenting process on a couple of different items that go along with these prosthetic limbs. And our hope is that we could co-locate, excuse me, locate them temporarily uh, in the current building that was the former ABI building. And you may recall when we talked about the airports earlier, they all have names besides the industry that's in them because the industries can come and go and the leases can change and the occupancy can change. So it's on your screen here shown in yellow. Um, and so Oliver, this is the main road when you come into the airport off of First Street. And then so this is that building. It's approximately 22,000 square foot in total, has some office space, has a manufacturing space available to it, has some equipment that they wouldn't necessarily be using right now, some mixers and things, but they really need that, that space to be able to kind of start their business while hopefully Beth and I can and find them something that is a great fit for them. Um, so our proposal for you this evening is that we would like to lease them the ABI space on a 90-day lease, excuse me, building V. I'm getting, I got to work on that, you guys. Don't let me. We don't say that. That would be, that is. ABI. Yeah, the building not to be mentioned again. Um, so building the V for victory. And uh, so we would propose a, a lease for you this evening that is 90 days with an option to an extend additional 90 days. Our incentive in this is, of course, the use of that space. So they would not be charged rent while they're working on finding another space, and they're going to be saving up for you know deposits on a new space and purchase of their equipment. Uh, they are providing a $3,000 refundable deposit, so assuming the building's left the way they found it, um, that is how they would get it back. Um, again, I kind of noted to you, this is about the whole size of the building here, and what they are looking at is the green space is what they would be occupying and utilizing. Uh, so again, this open space is the current manufacturing area. There's a break room here, an office, a couple of restrooms, and then another office on this side up here. 
So that's kind of the high level proposal for you this evening. Um, I would also add that we have another compatible industry that has been looking at the building that would utilize all of the equipment that is in it as well as part of their manufacturing process. It would be a complement to several of our existing industries at the airport and also to human plant solutions. Um, and they are working on finishing up a large contract and they should know within a few months if they've landed that contract and if they do, they would need to utilize the whole building in approximately six to eight months from now. Hence kind of the time frame we're on. We're hoping that buys us enough time to find them a wonderful home permanently here in Newton that's just right for their needs. Can you share with the public the some of the funds that they received. From oh, the yes, excuse me. I, I neglected to mention in your agenda packet, there is also, um, Beth has graciously worked with our partners at WSU and they've run your cost benefit analysis, which we do ask for every uh, incentive, whether it's going to be the use of this space or sometimes, you know, when we provide taxables like uh, in industrial revenue bonds, when we build new, those kinds of things. So the cost benefit analysis did come back as uh, above a one, and that has been your policy in the past, is you want to see at least a one on that cost benefit analysis. I would note, Typically, we run those for like a 10-year period because that's usually a property tax abatement or the IRB length. This is a little bit different because this is a shorter-term lease. So it does change the numbers a little bit, doesn't change the bottom line ROI, still being above a 1.0. And they also received some funding from the state. We are very grateful for our partners at Commerce. Um, Beth mentioned earlier this evening about how they have staffed up and they've really worked to change their incentive programs and make us more competitive. And they do need to have a physical address in place and say, this is our home, to uh, go ahead and process and receive those funds. So it is a bit of a time sensitive issue on, on that front. Um, they're, they're ready to go. Like I said, they're already in production working. They just need to get resituated and then finish up all of their, their stuff. Is that accurate high level okay and if you have specific questions for these guys I'd be very happy to introduce you they have been they have educated me I have learned so much that I didn't even you don't know what you don't know and it's not as something I haven't dealt with in my family the need for prosthetic limbs and some of the things that they're working on are just so amazing and cutting edge right now they could change the face of medicine for these folks I might add uh, having an occupant in that building is beneficial as well yes. these buildings die a fast death. They do, and we, uh, you know, we have the new water line extension. Water users out there right now will be very helpful to us. It helps turn the system faster and create additional pressure for the other occupants that are out there too. And that would be something they will be paying their their usage of the utilities. We have a, it's in uh, Chris's memo. We have a required amount that as part of the build out to Butler Rural Electric who installed all of the equipment and the that kind of thing. We have a minimum monthly payment that we make already. Um, they would pay for usage. We will continue to make our current payments so that our agreements are current with Butler. Do you have questions for Chris or I? And otherwise we would we would defer to these gentlemen to speak to you just a little bit or answer questions you may have. Any questions? And I will just say a quick house plate keeping matter. Um, we did amend Article 3. We just moved the start date from March 12th to March 19th and then the ultimate end date to 915. And Kelly covered all the main components. There is an adjacent hangar as part of this building that's not included in the lease right there. The hangar's right here. Right. Um, and obviously either the tenant or the city um, either can cancel on that second 90 days if the city has a need or if they have a different need. So it would be by joint agreement. Uh, but I think you covered all the main components. There. And, yeah, I just mentioned Chris's point about the change for the start time is although this building, uh, you remember our, the county is our partner at the airport on all, you know, we, we jointly own that land and we have to enter into land leases jointly. Um, <clears throat> this building is unique because most of those buildings out there we also own jointly. This one, just we, the city own. However, when we do a lease versus when somebody builds or buys their building, then they have a separate ground lease. When we're just leasing, it's a triple net lease and that ground lease is included as part of as part of the lease. So out of courtesy to our partners at the county, it will need to go to the county commission meeting this coming Tuesday for them to sign off on and I will be there to, to, to answer questions. They might have a, I haven't been able to catch Anthony yet. We've emailed a few times, but I was going to answer some questions he has. And Mr. Nida, the county attorney, I believe has, has it. So there's all the equipment is still in the building, correct, from tanks and everything like that. What the bolted down stuff is still there. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> what do we have? Um, what what kind of provisions are in place to protect our assets involved and what we have there at the building? Great question. 
the city's, and Suzanne can jump in, but essentially what we've done is only lease that portion that's shaded in green. So one, it will be blocked off with some sort of temporary uh, barrier okay. to, to kind of show that separation. And two, we have asked for that security deposit. Um, Maybe I look over here, it'd be easier. Yeah. Oh, so the white oh, space, okay. okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so Most this. Of the equipment's on the Fixed Most of the on the equipment white. is up okay, here. Exactly. Those tanks are all along this I was trying to read something on that one. This one's closer, though. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. New tech, yeah. we're not using it. There's also a lab area that's not part yeah. of the leased <laughs> area, but all of that office that space down below and then that op uh, office space is um, yeah. included in the lease. Yeah, this is okay. the main entrance to the building, and there are a few entrances. There's some outside overhead doors over here that they would need to be uh, utilizing to get equipment in and out and okay. that kind of thing. And those are large overhead doors. Um, but really the main entry to the building, because remember it was, we're, you know, we want to use this as the asset that it is. And we, you know, this is a, an opportunity for us to try something a little bit new and uh, get somebody in that building and give it some new life. And so again, because it was designed for a single occupant, it doesn't have multiple points of entry, like just to this front office space. So there's just the one entry here. There's a restroom here in an office and then another little office area that's got like some cubicles in it and then a break room and then a couple of restrooms here. And so then this is the mostly open manufacturing space with the overhead doors. Would they have keyed access though to the, the warehouse portion with the tanks? Yeah, okay. you would still be able to access that area. Yeah. It would be a, just an understanding between the parties. Okay. Yeah, because the ceilings are 30 feet high and mm -hmm. we don't have yeah, I was wondering. It's all open in this all of this is open to each other. So I was thinking of like, I mean, if there was fire or anything like that, that, that oh. they caused what, what, I mean, the, obviously we still have insurance on the building, Don, but yeah. what about all the components inside? Are they gonna Donna can speak to the insurance, but they, uh, we carry insurance on the premises mm -hmm. and they'll have a liability uh, okay. requirement. And remember there's a, this, uh, nice this building, I remember Drew, it was because it was for chemical manufacturing, it was built to class one, div one specifications, which the, you know, the, the joke is it's, it's explosion proof. It's, it's meant to contain something bad that would happen because you were dealing with vol volatile chemicals. So it does have a concrete fire suppression foam system on the whole building and it's, it's active. It's been recently inspected and updated in the last couple of weeks since we knew we had a potential for some tenants coming in soon. And that is that it, this is separate. It's actually in a completely different room and it's got, and it's all the huge pipes and things. So this isn't usable space. Well, we don't have much risk because we're not building a building to put them into. <laughs> Our risk is involved with everything that's there. That's why I'm asking. Right. Yeah, great question. Exactly. Yeah. Otherwise the building essentially sits vacant for the next right. few, few months, but you're right. The risk is having someone in there and that wear and tear. We've tried to offset that by dividing that section and asking for security deposit. You may want to use the microphone just because yeah, it, it is yeah. live. Yeah, so everybody. Yeah, I'm sorry, we live stream our meeting so that way they can hear you up here. So. Yeah, so um, the only kind of stuff that we'll be doing that would even cause any wear and tear on the building would be grinding of the materials. And what we've decided to do is actually we're going to get a small container and actually put that container inside and do everything that would be any kind of grinding or anything inside a contained space that would never enter it into this into the workspace because we really do actually kind of have this unique idea for i mean there's 40 million people that don't have access to prosthetic care or can't afford it a lot of those people are in third world countries um you know a lot of it has to do with they don't want to send carbon to these third world countries but now that we're utilizing natural fiber the hemp plant which you can grow in 120 days you know we really want to focus on education and and eating into that number of 40 million people. And we truly believe that this container, which will be a first container, which we're kind of utilizing and got the idea of, because we didn't want to mess up this beautiful building, will now become almost a mobile pro uh, prosthetic fabrication facility that we can utilize at community events, outreach programs, and eventually hopefully take it to another country so we can really eat into that number. because. I mean, that's, that's why Kyle, I'm, I'm the business side of this. Kyle created this company. This was his idea, but that's truly what our focus is, is education and, and really bringing this material to people who don't have access to it. So, sorry to answer your question. That's, good. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. that's perfect. That's why it's wonderful that you guys are here, because I wouldn't know those things. So we really appreciate it.
Is this going to require a simple motion? It would be a motion to approve the agreement, and it would be contingent on the tenant signing and providing the insurance requirement and the deposit, and then also your county partners approving the same. But yes, a simple motion to approve the agreement as presented with the exception being that Article 3 amendment that I've handed you, and I'm happy to give a copy to anyone in the audience that's interested in I that. Would, uh, I would offer <laughs> such a motion with all the details that you just laid out. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. We have a motion. I will second that. We have a second. All those in favor? I, 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 any opposed? I, I think I, I talked to Chris, and, and I'm going to recuse myself, uh, not because I really have to, but I've been working real close with these guys through economic development. I just feel like, for transparency's sake, it, it might be best that I recuse myself. So then the record would show that. Uh, one abstain. One abstain. Very good. In favor, one abstain. Motion passes. the clipboard out today for a citizen form. I do not know Thank you. Pam? Good evening. I just want to come and brag a little bit about the new police department. Uh, last week we had an incident and there was some a uh, homeless lady that was sleeping on the ground there by Gilmore's uh, law office early in the morning. And I saw her in front of the train station waiting for the beeline. And then the next thing I knew, she was in my office building right outside my door having a uh, mental pro problem and was very vocal. And so I called the police department and I want to say you have to be very proud. They were very kind. Uh, they worked with this lady. She was from Russell. I think they called her family. Uh, they then took her to New Jerusalem, got her lunch, and I don't know what happened afterwards. But they were very kind with her, kind of got her calmed down. Zach came to my rescue and, and helped. Uh, she was, you know, very upset with the beeline. I don't know what, what was going on there, but that had been the second incident. We had had one about a month before. And I don't know if these people are getting off the train or the bus, and they're kind of in that the train depot area. And so um, we were very thankful. I found out that just called the police department. They deal with that all the time, and they were very good and got her where she needed to be. I was the only one in the office except Beth was on a Zoom call, so she got Zach to come help me. So uh, very thankful that they were you know, right there when I needed them, and they were treated her with much respect. So. Kudos to the police department. Yeah. Kudos, Chief. Anything else? No, sir. Very good. Well, we'll go around the horn. Leroy? Nothing. Thank you. Kathy? Um, it's just good to be back in person. Yes, it is. Donna? We're getting ready to get into the 2022 year. But mm -hmm. we're prepared for all that that's coming down. I got new pen. Nothing. Nothing? Chris? No, sir. Denise? No, sir. Kelly? I just thank you for hanging in there while we did our new tech tonight. I hope it went well from Ms. Aaron's perspective. And she said, yeah. <laughs> we're still running a few bugs, but this is the first time we've truly been able to. We tested a planning commission, I think, the other night just to kind of work through some of the bugs. And so thanks for hanging in there with us. It's only going to get better, and we're, we're very proud. And again, thank you for those CARES money. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Sand Creek Festival's cranking up again. Uh, I think we've booked all the bands, and, and uh, uh, Greg Hansen's going 110 miles an hour. <laughs> Hadn't had any sleep for about three weeks, so <sighs> Greg hasn't. Yeah. I'm sleeping fine. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. Clint? Yeah, no, I'm just glad to be back, and uh, these new microphones pick up everything, so. Exactly. Just FYI to everybody out there. <laughs> Well, I want to say thank you to IT for bringing all the technology together, the CARES money, Donna for managing that for us, Kelly for getting us back in into session, and uh, mm -hmm. thank you for everybody that participated this evening, both physically and virtually. With that, 